The scatter and align SOP allows you to add attributes to the points that eventually get fed into the copy to point SOP. Now, if you haven't checked out the node Bible entry on the copy to points, I do recommend doing that before checking out this quick tip because I'll have to assume that you understand a general workflow that is behind instancing with the copy to points. But assuming that you're familiar with that, what's nice about the scatter align SOP is that it just makes common tasks more easier. So as an example, we have our terrain right here. That's the green nodes that we see. And all I really do is add some normals. I isolate some points. We could see those guys right here, these blue points. We then go through the scatter align. I add this variant attribute, and then I have some rocks that get copied like so. Merge that in with the original environments, and we end up with something like that. In this particular situation, the scatter align is working on the points that we give it. So in this case, I've isolated points ahead of time. It's not actually scattering. Instead, it's just adding the orient attribute right here, as well as p-scale. And actually it adds tag right here as well. But mostly normal, orient, p-scale. Those are the attributes that are affected by the scatter align. Now, as the name suggests, you could scatter points onto whatever you feed into the first input. However, I don't recommend doing that. It's much better to have specific control by just using a regular scatter SOP. So most of the time when I'm using this, I scatter ahead of time, and then I just use this node to figure out the orients and the p-scale attributes, as well as the normal. But anyway, what's nice about this is when we go to copy to points, we have a lot of handy parameters here to help us randomize things that you typically randomize. So as an example, Right now I have add attributes to existing point cloud because again, we're putting in points. What we can do is specify, let's say a minimum and a maximum radius. So between one and about nine, but I can turn this down. And as you can see, this gives me variety in the scaling. I don't have to use attribute randomize. I don't have to do a bunch of other things. It's all in one spot, which is really nice. On top of that, we can specify the orient or the normal attributes if we'd like. So right now the normal is heading up in the Y, the forward direction is Z, forward vector is no target, but we can set a forward vector if we want. So let's say that I want these rocks to generally point in the Y direction. I could say blend with Y and then I can change how much they do so right here. Uh, so that is a way to blend the normal towards a specific direction if you'd like. But we have options for that, and we have options for randomizing the rotation. So in this example, we have a max random cone angle. If I turn that down, we have less randomization in how it's turned. When it says cone, imagine the normal direction and then putting a cone in that normal direction, like a spherical cone. Kind of like the cone you might put on uh, your dog's head after surgery <laughs> or something like that. That's what I picture in my head, right? We have this cone and it will randomly alter the normal direction uh, within that cone. So that's what the cone angle right here is trying to do. And that gives us a lot of interesting shapes like so. Also, we can rotate around the normal. So that cone will take the normal and kind of rotate it like this. But then the next question is, how would you like to spin that rock around that normal? So that's what's happening with the rotation around the normal. If I set this to zero and zero, all the rocks for the most part will be facing the same direction, especially if I turn off the random cone angle right here. So for many situations, you want the min angle to be zero, the max to be 360. And I like to add a bit of the cone randomization as well, in this particular situation at least. But we have all of those options right there. It's super nice because before 
you used to have to use the attribute randomize for normal, for P scale, for all kinds of stuff. And here you can find it all in one place. Keep in mind that this does not select the variant that gets sent to the rocks. The variant is responsible for selecting one rock for one point and sending it over there. That's actually a different node called the attribute from pieces SOP right here. And I'm not going to go over that right now, but just for your own knowledge, usually the scatter align is used with this attribute from pieces to simplify the instancing workflow when using the copy to points. For more videos that are thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, check out cgforge.com, where you'll find resources, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and much more that's all designed to help you achieve your Houdini goals quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.